Hello and welcome back to Mini's first rally adventure as we follow Mark Nuttall and the team of experts who want to beat the world to get a new BMW Mini on a forest rally stage. The glitches in the project had mainly been second guessing the BMW design team. The wiring of, of the car, um, to all intents and purposes, BMW have done quite a few little tricks uh, in the wiring and there's, there's a, a lot more in there than you would see in an older car. Um, we've had to strip the loom back which, and, and take all the unnecessary wires out. Um, and that's, that's taken a, a couple of extra days longer than what we wanted to see. And now it's time for Mark and Chris to get fitted out for their rally suits for the big day. It's time to relax a little and remember why rallying such great fun. The car is nearing completion and Daniel's got the livery plans finalised after negotiations with the sponsors. The design for the uh, livery on the car has been now finalised. Uh, we have uh, some visuals of it and the way that the car is coming together I feel that we have the new Formula 2 car in the making. The car seems ready, but everything has to be tested in situ. The precious Mini is taken to Yorkshire for the test day. The pressure really is on driver Mark Nuttall to take the machine to the limits as well as looking after it for the big rally day itself. My biggest fear is Mark crashing. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's down to me and my co-driver on that rally to get that car to the end. That is my main goal, to finish that rally. This day will be a big test for the new suspension system, which is radically different from the original road model of the Cooper S. We've got the damper design. The damper looks good on paper. We've sorted the springing out to the best of our abilities on paper, but obviously the test is what we're all anxious to do. Mark and Chris are looking forward to their first drive of the Rally Mini and the engineers are working hard to ensure nothing goes wrong. Well, we being the first time the Mini being out, uh, we always come with a few complications, uh, but everything seems to be going fine at the moment. Everything was fine until it appeared the car had a mind of its own. Watch the Mini very closely behind. Here we are in uh, Cropton, up in North Yorkshire, uh, and it's test day for the Mini. It's the first time the car has ever run. In fact, up to this point, they were still in the garage last night, spanner in the car. It's only run. So why did the car start on its own and reverse? That was only something minor. Uh, a ghost we put it down to. <laughs> Rob, the engineer, gave us a lowdown on what he thinks happened. Basically, the uh, mains cable shorted out on the solenoid on the starter which gave it a direct feed of power and we being in gear at the time it, it decided it was going to drive itself up the road <laughs> everything was going well until it appeared that something was getting very hot at the rear. What it is, the tank's not covered up over exhaust. So I think what's happening is storm's going into the tank over exhaust. Aye. Uh, uh, you can see it, it's all melted above Just crack exhaust. it up though. <laughs> there was nothing for it but to push it up the base and take a closer look at the damage. Exhaust is too close to the tank. <laughs> Of course, with all the heat and everything, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the tank melted, petrol fell, it's ignited. So we were lucky there, really lucky. <laughs> I could smell plastic and I couldn't decide, you know, I'm not knowing the tank was there, I weren't sure. Despite the major setback, spirits are high. Let's get a bent in with a bit of pipe in. I'm like car driver all day. It's just so good. I'm like car driver. And then stick bent in and let, let him hold it. Overall, however, the Mini's first test day was a huge success. Elated with how the car handles and brakes. It, it's beyond anything I'd ever hoped, really. Straight out of the box, the car is just there. With the rally 24 hours away, Mark's beginning to have doubts of the Mini's capabilities. The main, the main problem we're going to have with this car on the rally is uh, because it's not homologated, in other words, a specification laid down by the manufacturer, it will have to run in 
uh, what's called Group B. And cars it will be in the same class as, such as the Mitsubishi and the Impreza, they're four-wheel drive, we're two-wheel drive, so straight away there's a disadvantage. As you said, there's, it's not been done before. Um, it needs a lot of committed people to make the project happen. The day before the big rally, and the Mini has finally been completed and checked out, the underside has been transformed with a new exhaust and protection for the rigours of the rally ahead and to prevent another fire. Basically we've made a heat shield over the tank and uh, hopefully this will deflect the heat from the exhaust and therefore we won't have the same problem we had in test. Daniel Harper has the honour of driving the potential rally star onto the trailer. Next stop, the Malcolm Wilson stages in Cumbria. It's the morning of the rally and the team are in good spirits. The car is fantastic. I, I can't say enough of it. It's just down to me today to prove how good it is, really. Hopes for today are that, uh, firstly, to finish. Secondly, to finish without problems. And thirdly, to finish well. Uh, the main thing for us today is to get around and, and with as least amount of problems as possible. But little did the team know that a big problem was going to rear its ugly head here at Cockermouth, the official start. As all the cars line up for an official wave off, everyone's very positive about the appearance of the mini newcomer. I think it has the potential to be a very good rally car. Certainly from a media point of view, it's going to create a lot of interest, which is good for sponsorship um, for the car. Um, I think, yeah, I think it would be really good, especially if there can be more of them that uh, take to the stages. Well, if it gets up the ramp, this is the first new Mini. It's the turn of the Mini to mount the ramp, but the engine stalls and it won't start. Ironically, one of the oldest cars in the event, a Mark I Escort, has to overtake the new Mini as the fuses are frantically checked. It appears that every time Mark starts the engine, the fuel pump fuse seems to blow and also kicks in the immobilizer. Daniel arrives to try and sort the problem personally. He's not a happy man. Mark just has to sit tight and hope that time doesn't run out. Desperate situations call for desperate measures, even slapping the fuel tank. As Mark sees the dream disappear, the miracle happens. The Mini Cooper S is up and running, and at last, it can officially start. From what we've heard, he had an electrical fault just prior to the start, which has cut the fuel pump out and blown the fuel pump fuse, as far as we understand it. Uh, just what, how, what, we're not sure, but they've got the car started and they've gone into stage last on the road, I believe. On the first stage, all the traditional rally cars are in abundance, but the cheeky Mini is turning heads on its first ever appearance. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And through posts. Eight distance continues, big caution, small crest, in two, log inside, right four long, 60. In two, tight right four. In between stages, the new unique suspension system has to be checked and tweaked for optimum performance, while Mark talks to reporters. I'm biased all the braking towards the front, it really turns in beautifully. We just, I think the stages were just perfect, really. First two stages, just getting to know the car, really. Um, <clears throat> it was okay, a little bit twitchy. We made some adjustments. It was bottoming out quite a lot on those stages, so we made some adjustments when we came back into first service, and uh, they just transformed it for me. I sort of made some tweaks of my own to the braking and things, and uh, that last stage that we just did, stage four, was just unbelievable. Um, the car is fantastic. I'm really, really pleased with it. It does everything you ask it. Uh, I just can't speak highly enough of it. That last stage, we just had an absolute hoot in there. It was an absolute ball. Um, if nothing else, that, that's the memory I'll go away with. Just that last stage, 
the car was working perfectly. For the next stages, the precious Mini gets a sponge over. After all, it's the big star newcomer today. Everything's been checked out and it's on to the final stages. The day's rallying is delayed into darkness due to an accident involving another car, but the Mini continues to perform well to the end. It's been a long event. That's a job. Right, we're going back up to finish now, so we'll see you back in there. We meet up with Mark and Daniel the next day to ask how they believe the project went. Part of this was a, as a development operation for next year. We're going to make a challenge championship for 2005. So the car will be developed this year further in preparation for that. We developed the car. We're, the car is a, is a winning car. And I'd like to say a special thank you to Daniel for putting all his time and all the guys putting their time and their effort in. Without them, it definitely wouldn't have happened. After six months of hard work, it's been really worthwhile. We've learned a lot. Uh, and there's still a lot more to come out of the car yet. They've got a fantastic product there, and I'm sure it'll just go on and on and on. And if you want fun in a rally car, Mini is the way to go.